Welcome to this hands-on exercise in creating indices on Pinecon. The goal of this project is to develop a customized chatbot. For this, we will need to train our chatbot with a specific information from the Pinecon company. You will have to train a large language model using the personalized information stored in the training QA.txt file. You can access this TXT via the link or address included in the additional material. Once you have completed this step, you will need to upload the TXT file to Flowwise. Use a fragmenter to divide it and make sure not to exceed the token limit of the model. Then, generate the indices that will be stored in the Pinecon Vector database. When you are ready, you can begin this hands-on exercise. In the next task, we will provide you with the solution. In this task, we will provide the solution to the exercise of creating indexes in Pinecon. As we already know, we were asked to train a large language model with personalized company information. This company specializes in selling flowers online. For this, we must train Pinecon users with the information we have within the training QA TXT. We must load the TXT, fragment it, and generate the indexes in Pinecon. Let's go with the solution. We are going to create a new project in Flowwise and first we need to add the model which will be from the Estet OpenAI. Next we will add Conversational Retrieval 4.0 and the model for flower sales. So that the model can respond to us based on information, here we have it responding based on documents. In our case, it will answer based on the information stored in a TXT. The next thing we need to do is create a new Pinecon model. These indexes will be stored in Pinecon. Therefore, in the vector store section, you must look for those Pinecon. This would be the load system index, which allows loading existing indexes and the observed document which allows processing a document and generating Pinecon indexes. We need the later, and we should link it with Retrieval 4.0. We need to add credentials to the model and link it to our language model for Retrieval 4.0. The first part involves passing a series of indexes from Pinecon to the model. We have already programmed Pinecon's credentials. If we hadn't done it, we would need to access Pinecon and, in the API key section, obtain set credentials. Finally, we need to create new indexes. We must assign them a name and provide them with a specific dimension of the chat GPT model, which would be 1536. It is essential to maintain the dimension setting, otherwise it won't work. We click on Create Index and, at this point, it tells us that with a free account, we cannot generate more than one index. We have removed the one we already had, and now it would allow us to create a new one. As we can see, it is in the selection, and it will take a few minutes to complete. In the meantime, we will continue setting up the model. The next step is to obtain the TXT, fragment it, and then generate the embeddings. To start with the retrieval of the TXT, we head to Document Loader. Here, we select the option that allows us to load text, in this case, text file. This is the document we would pass to PyCon. In flock file, we must add the txt file, which is the one we see labeled as training.ua. Once added, the next step would be to fragment the text so as not to exceed the model's token limit. For this, we go to Text Splitter and choose Recursive Character Splitter. We are going to set an overlap and proceed to add it. Now we just have to generate the embeddings. If we recall, embeddings are numerical arrays that represent the original texts. It is crucial to generate these embeddings, as it is with them that language models work. Therefore, we go to the embedding section and select, in this case, the one from OpenAI. We add the credentials again and establish the link. We return to PyCon to check if the indexes have been created, with the aim of executing the process. We have them created. We copy the indexes and use the previously generated credentials. We save all changes and proceed to execute. For this, we go to the assistant and make a request. 
we notice that it is going to take some time to respond, as it is loading the TXT, generating vectors and indexes and storing them in PyCon. If we return to PyCon, we see that we have gone from having 0 vectors to 5. If we ask any question related to the information we provided in the TXT, we should check if it answers us correctly. As a result, we see that it is answering us correctly, as in the TXT, we find both the question and the solution. This indicates that the model is working correctly. Welcome to this hands-on exercise. In it, you will develop a customized large language model that uses the indexes you previously created in Pinecon to answer user questions. To do this, you will need to create a chat flow that can be deployed in production, loading information from Pinecon vectors and using that information to respond to queries. It is essential that you use a specific Pinecon module that allows loading existing indexes. When you are ready, you can start with the exercise. In the end, we will provide you with the solution. In this task, we will present the solution to the exercise developing a custom language model. The goal of the exercise was to develop a model that answered user questions, using the indexes we had previously stored in Pinecon. We were told that this code would be the one implemented in production, meaning integrated into the website. Furthermore, it was clarified that the vectors should not be constantly regenerated. Given this context, we will proceed with the solution. Let's recall the project from the previous exercise, in which we had added a large language model, OpenAI's GPT 3.5. This model was designed to answer questions based on indexes stored in Pinecon. Now, since we have the indexes in Pinecon, our intention is to make use of them without the need to regenerate them, since information will not change. This strategy will allow us to reduce the latency between the user's questions and the model's answers. The next step is to eliminate the loading of the TXT since it is already stored in vector format in Pinecon. We only need to replace this Pinecon element with the module to load existing indexes. In the menu, we select Vector Store, and instead of Observe Document, we opt for Load Existing Index. We proceed to add the credentials and assign it the name, which in our case is SRI. Once this is done, we link the embedding section and in Pinecon Retriever, we connect to the corresponding model. This way, instead of constantly loading the TXT and generating the indexes, we'll simply access Pinecon to get the indexes and answer the user. Once the changes are saved, we clear that chat history, ask a question and observe the answer. As can be seen, the model responds more agilely and is using the pre-existing indexes, avoiding the loading and processing of the file. This would be the code that could implement in production to integrate into Flower Sales website. In this way, the advanced language model will answer user questions related to the store or the purchase process. Welcome to the final hands-on exercise of this project. In it, you will put the customized large language model into production. To achieve this, you will need to develop the code that allows the implementation of this assistant in a production environment. Additionally, you will need to obtain the necessary code to embed the model into the website and finally get it up and running. In this task, we will finish the project of developing a personalized assistant for an online flower shop. Throughout the previous exercises, we have been achieving the projects, specifically the customized large language model that can use the store's information. Throughout this task, we will put the code into production. For this, we are instructed to obtain the code that has the call to the customized large language model to embed it in the website's code. As a starting material, we will use the applied project folder that contains all the files to generate the web. This would be the folder, and here we can see how we have different files. We have the training quad information that we had previously mentioned, and then we have the necessary codes to develop a web page with HTML and CSS. For example, in public, add different images that will be used on the web. Index has the HTML code to generate the web, and style has the color style. To execute this project, we need a viewer that allows us to run HTML code. In our case, we recommend doing it through Visual Studio Code. Let's now move on to the solution to the exercise. 
once we already have the Flowwise project, which is this one we had here, which loaded the information from the vectors previously stored in Python and was able to answer users questions, we are going to install Visual Studio Code. We can install it from this address, and it would be as simple as clicking Download for Windows. The installation would begin, and once it is done, we would access something like this. We have to select the File option in the Open folder and open the folder that contains the project information. We would have the index.html that we can already see in this HTML code with the head. Then we have the body here and some features. In Style, we find the style and colors used on the page. Next, in the Extensions section, we are going to install Life Server. We will click Install and after a few minutes, the installation will begin. This will allow us to run the HTML code. Once it shows that it is installed, we can go to Index, right-click and open with Live Server. And here we would have access to our website. And this is where we want to embed our Flowwise Assistant. To embed it, we are going to come here and we will have to put it into production. We are going to come here to Pinpoint and, as we already know, we have different ways to deploy it into production. The easiest way would be this one here, where we just have to copy the code somewhere in the body. We copy it and return the Visual Studio. In Index, we locate the body which is this one here and paste the project. We will relaunch the website, and now we can see everything remains the same, except that the icon here already tells us that it is running thanks to Flowwise. In here we can ask it whatever we want, and we will see how our personalized assistant can answer us. It indicates that they have a wide variety of roses and sizes for any occasion and tastes. If we wanted to modify the appearance of these icons a bit, the color, these kinds of things, we would have to come here to the pop-up HTML option and show embed chat config and here we could modify how it runs, for example, the background color, shape and all these types of features. Congratulations, you have finished this project in which we have generated a personalized assistant that answers questions about this flower selling business. Thanks to this assistant, users will be able to get real-time answers at all times to questions related to purchasing, the company or the different products they have.